Alrighty guys, we're back for Hanada's Discovery, and this is a Lost Caverns of Ixalan standard brew. We're gonna go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat and I build all kinds of different decks, but I do prefer aggro decks and any decks with a red in them as well. Also, we do have that Discord link as well as that Patreon link down in the description if you're interested in joining either of those up. Okay, what do we got packed into the build here? This one's based around Hanada Dawncrowned. It's a 4 mana, 4-4 four, four legendary creature rocking Jeskai colors up there. Has flying and trample. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each target. Okay. Spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast for each target. Nice. Awesome build around card. We got some new stuff to try out with Hanada, like Daring Discovery here. It's a 5 mana sorcery speed. Up to 3 target creatures can't block this turn. So you can also target your own creatures if need be, right? So hopefully with Hanada on the board, we're having this cost 3 less for only 2 mana. That could be pretty sick because we also have Discover 4 tacked onto this card. So you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with mana value 4 or less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost or put it into your hand Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. I'm super excited. I wonder how often we're just going to be playing this out for five mana too, right? Because we're not always going to get the combo with Hanada down. <laughs> um, and if you play this for five mana and take a whole bunch of blockers out of the equation, you might be winning that turn anyways, especially if the Discover 4 hits something good too. So yeah. I think it's going to be really solid if we do get the combo with Hanada, then it's going to be pretty gross to cast this out for potentially two mana, right? A whole bunch of other stuff to work with that Hanada as well, like Ancestor's Aid here. It's a two mana instant speed. Target creature gets plus two plus oh and gains first strike until the end of turn, and then you also create a treasure token. So this could potentially cost just one red mana if Hanada's down on the board, right? We have Burning Sun's Fury packed in here. We don't get to see this one too often. So two mana instant speed. It has Convoke so our creatures can help cast it. Up to two target creatures each get plus two plus oh and gain haste until end of turn. And honestly, haste in this deck in particular could really come in handy because we're generating some prowess monks off of Monastery Mentor. It's a three mana two two rock and prowess. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Create a 1-1 one, one white monk creature token with prowess. Nice. We can go wide super fast and effective with the Monastery Mentor. Biggest problem with this card is actually just keeping it on the board. And this time round for this type of deck, I actually opted for like no protection. Well, I don't want to say no protection because we do have a single Valorous Dance in here as well as a couple family reunions too. So this could also help buff a wide board state from the Monastery Mentor. So what is this? This is a two mana instant speed. We get to choose one of these. Creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Or creatures you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Nice. Pretty sick card, dude. I really like it. And then instead of like more protection spells and stuff, I'm actually opting just for some draw spells instead. So chart a course here. 2 mana, sorcery speed, draw 2 cards, then discard a card unless you attack this turn, and we really want to attack in a deck like this, so often it's going to be 2 mana draw 2, which sounds really good for a deck that doesn't mind playing as much as possible every single turn, so your hand's going to be empty all the time, right? We have more new stuff, Atali's Favor in here as well, this is a 3 mana enchantment aura, enchanted, uh, enchant creature you control, and then when it enters the battlefield, discover three. Nice. <laughs> Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample as well. So a giving trample to prowess creatures happens to be incredible. And our last prowess creature of the deck, of course, all four monastery swift spears here at the front of the build. <laughs> uh, actually, we can kind of count Narset Enlightened Exile as a prowess creature too, because it is a four mana, three, four legendary creature that says creatures you control have prowess. Of course, that includes itself, uh, luckily, since it doesn't say other creatures. This, this is a one of in here. And whenever Narset attacks, exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost like all the abilities on this are pretty strong man so it's definitely going to be worth the one of it's it, the biggest issue again is just like keeping these creatures on the board right 
uh, all over the place with this one, huh, guys? We also have an Immo Danes Recruiter. This is uh, three mana, two, two. And when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. So you can imagine if you're kind of spamming some stuff out with like a uh, Monastery Mentor and you're getting a bunch of monks out and you have stuff costing less with Hanada and you go like Daring Discovery and then on that Discover 4, you hit the Immo Danes Recruiter and then all those monks also get the plus one plus oh and they get the haste too so it's kind of the concept for the emo danes recruiter but it also has that adventure side that could come in handy in here because of all of our prowess creatures it's a sorcery speed uh five mana train troops so you get two 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 white knight creature tokens with vigilance beautiful i think the two of is gonna be worth it <laughs> the mana base i thought about for a little bit guys i hope i landed on something some noteworthy things over here is the restless anchorage so it ETBs tapped, unfortunately. You can tap it for Azores colors. And then for one, a white and a blue until end of turn. It becomes a 2-3 white and blue bird creature with flying. <laughs> Whenever it attacks, you also create a map token, which could come in handy. You never know. Uh, just, yeah, these restless lands, I, I keep bringing it up, but they all just look really decent, don't they? Uh, more restless lands rocking a bivouac and also a restless spire i don't know if it's like actually going to be worth playing all these different things because they all come in tapped we'll see how often it actually ends up holding us up now opted for some early land with the battlefield forge early land with the coast and then some uh, i guess late game land I don't, I don't know what to call the uh, storm carved coast i guess slow land maybe <laughs> Also, Crucible, Soaring City, Seat of the Empire. We got some honorable mentions over here, too. I'm not going to take too long to go over them, but I thought about Helping Hand for the build. Thought about Relic's Roar. Really, I think I want to try this out in a, like, a double strike style build instead, right? Uh, with some of those other cards that also turn your creatures into uh, beefy things. <laughs> this card seems decent. You can imagine packing, like, Relic's Roar onto an unblocked Swiss Spear. That could get gross really fast. Wait a minute. I said I wasn't going to go over these. Ah! We have Invasion of Gabacon that I thought about, and Kenra Spellspear almost made the cut, as well as Draconic Destiny, too. I, I thought about this as a one of. Okay, guys, let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game here. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? <laughs> okay, we gotta expect Jank, right? We we just like we have to. But every time I play a deck like this, like there there's those games where we just completely pop off and it makes you question existence. <laughs> oh no, no white source. But of course could help us draw into oh no creatures either. Oh this this hand is awful. And the opponent goes first. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Every now and then, I really like to risk it. And uh, we do have a turn two chart, of course, which could help us find whatever we need to find. <laughs> this hand is like one of those hands that's just like, it's so bad that I just feel like I have to try it, you know, just to see what happens. <laughs> oh, man. But don't worry, if we have like more hands like this as the as the day goes on, then I'll consider the ball again a little bit more seriously. Okay, some dinos. Hey, there's our white source. Look at us go, guys. Well, we really don't want to go Ancestor's Aid. Also, the treasure could have been a white source too. Uh, the, the big mulligan there would have been no creatures, but we don't have too many creatures in here anyways, so. Ooh. Okay, well... This all could be a big problem. <laughs> yeah, it's like I said, not too many creatures packed in anyways, but uh, generally speaking, in a build like this, we, we shoot for around like 16 creatures because a lot of things need to be non-creatures. I think we have 15 in here, so a little on the low end. Could always power up Restless Spire, get the swings going. I don't like them having all that mana open. I feel like this is going to get burnt. Well, it's still worth the shot, though. The scry's really good. Just hopefully it doesn't get burnt away right away. All right, we got that scry. <laughs> oh, dear. The more mana we get out there, though, we might be able to pull off. <laughs> no, probably not. I was going to say powering up Spire, going Atali's favor onto it, getting the discover. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. 
Hey, actually, I think this is our first game against dinosaurs outside of the early access, or at least dino mid-range, which is what I'm ex expecting this to be with the hatcher in here. Down to seven. Daring discovery off the top. <laughs> oh, man. What have I done, guys? What have I done? That's really funny. Uh, let's get that scry. See what's on top. They actually, they might not... Hanada, let's go. We found that creature. That would have been great this turn, but we probably would have died next turn anyways. Oh, keep it on top. <laughs> but yeah, the block happens here. Either way, we had nothing else to do. Hey, good game? Qu question mark. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I know, I know. Uh, ooh. Another hatcher, and those work with each other then, right? Yeah, other dinosaurs you control have haste. So when you got both of them on the board, they give each other haste. Very cool. Then they can pop two of the eggs. Dang, dude. I'm I'm actually surprised it's taken this long to see some uh, dinos. I mean, even had we seen, and like, anything, <laughs> even if we had seen anything, we would have been in trouble. I think, uh, unless we uh, were actually able to pop off a little bit. Like the Hanada that turn, like we had the fourth mana for it, but we would have been forced to block with it there anyways, right? So, um, let's see, is it is it 15 creatures? We have the five four drops, we have the four one drops, we have the four uh, three drops and the two recruiters. Crap, I lost count. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's 15. <laughs> Okay, Swiss so Spear opener. Yep, much better. No blue source though now. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, nice. Ah, oh, jeez. I got concerned because I, I kept it like immediately just because I saw the creatures, which means now we'll actually be able to uh, do a little bit more. Because a lot of our spells obviously need creatures on the board too, so. Which in the final thoughts, we might talk about going up some creatures. Do we just like... Do we swing? Take out that? Yeah, we swing. Let's see what they end up. Uh, let's see what they end up doing here. Okay. Yep. Ancestors aid. Totally fine. Totally fine. We get a little ramp with it. We get the uh, dread knight out of the equation. So if they, if they, ooh, do I do this? No. Since it has haste anyways, we we keep it back. If it didn't have haste, we probably would have spent that treasure. They go for the draw. That's good news for us. Okay, what are the odds of running into a board wipe in Golgari? I think pretty low, right? So we could get the forge down. We we can take the turn to stock the board, right? And swing with our Swiss Spears. I think that's totally fine, man. Atali's favor comes down next turn. Paris Sunder for the mentor. Okay, keeping a couple Swiss Spears, though. Yeah, that was all four mana to take care of that. So do we start with Atali's Favor, then? Or do we go for the draw on Charter Course? I think we start with Atali's Favor. Where's this tapping? What's the, what's the best thing to tap here to keep open? Um, Probably like this and keep a red open, right? Probably, probably. All right, let's discover something terrific here. Discover three is a lot. Family reunion. Okay. It's good extra damage. Okay. <laughs> Nine coming through for the turn. One is down to seven. Recruiter was a good draw, but like, I don't know what I want to see here. We might draw before combat next turn. With the uh, chart, of course. <gasps> Gix's command. Oh no, guys. That's so bad. That's so bad. <laughs> okay, yeah, Gix's command is played in Golgari now that I'm thinking about it. So yeah, that 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 wiped the board. Um if we just go recruiter, swing for three, we're probably in trouble. We could draw. If we don't see if we don't see land, then we don't have the third. Okay, unfortunately, guys, I think it's Recruiter. And we just go for that swing. 
Um, we know how much spot removal Golgari has, and Liliana, that'll take care of it. And that would have gotten around the uh, hex proof anyways. So the thought process there was, do we go for the draw on chart, find a land, play the land, go recruiter? Oh, we would have found it too. Okay, I'm going to keep that for the discard on the chart. And it's at four. Come on, we need. We just need a little bit more. Okay, we should keep that. Okay, I guess we ditch the land here, right? Keep everything else because everything else helps us be a little bit explosive, right? I think so. We we have the problem with the plus on the Liliana every turn, draining our hand too. So, so we're gonna have to keep that chart of course. I would say. Probably Ancestor's Aid. That's a tough decision between Family Reunion and the Ancestor's Aid. Both can help us get that damage through, but I think it's Family Reunion based on the deck we're up against. Cruelty of Gix. Oh no, guys. Yeah. We, we, let, we let them live too long. Oh, they just casually have an Atali chilling over there too. So it's, it's not just Golgari. It's a Golgari reanimator. Oh, buddy, I wonder what they hit from us. Chart of course. Okay, that's not too bad, luckily. I mean, restocking their hand is pretty brutal, but... So if we kept Recruiter back, yeah, I don't think that would have worked out. I, I don't know. I think, yeah, every turn slamming a little bit of damage through was essential, but... Ooh, Daring Discovery. That could come in handy. Unfortunately, we got to go chart a course as we look for more creatures. They they kind of they kind of just obliterated our board state. I like the discover on both of these more than the family reunion, and I actually like the fifth land here because we're probably going to need it for the daring discovery. But we have to keep something for the Liliana discard too. Two swift spears and a recruiter, so we still have. Still have a fair bit. Do we discard the favor and play the land for the turn? I think it comes down to what they end up doing here. Because we have a couple turns before we die from the Atali swing. Oh, actually. Okay, hold on. We, all have things we'd rather. we are going to ditch the Atali's favor because we're probably going to target the Daring Discovery on all their creatures. Okay. 14 coming through. No, keeping blockers back. They know we have hasty things in here. Darn it. Uh, I don't know what we would have hit. Oh, except, yeah, what am I doing, guys? Yeah, this, this makes them so that they can't block anyways, but I don't know exactly what we would hit for the four mana. And some, I'll give it haste and win on the same turn. But since they only swung with Restless Cottage, we might have two turns. Problem is they have the minus two on Liliana too, so alright. We go for it. Daring discovery. <laughs> Your creatures can't block. Oh, they can gain from the food too. Valorous stance is a good hit, man. That's a decent hit. It's not a creature, but like taking the Atali out of the equation. And now they don't gotta worry about minus two, so they just go plus Liliana, get rid of our hand. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Now this is the opponents, but we're definitely going to play it all out because they have the damage required. Well, still saving stuff back. I also want to see what's on top of our deck too. So far in the first two games, we got to consider maybe a couple more creatures. It's like two more, maybe we'll see them a bit more consistently. Hmm... We only cast two chart, of course, right? And the opponent casts the third one. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, we're just going to end up discarding everything we draw now. Back up to 10 from the food. And they could power up Cottage. They could full swing now. Now that they're at 10 and they're discarding our hand, there's... I, I'm pretty sure there's literally no way of having one card explode into 10 damage at, at this point with only five mana, you know what I mean? It's gonna be it's gonna be that full swing. Okay, there we go. 
Yeah, I think I think the opponent could have wrapped it up a, a couple turns ago, but I think it was also smart to play it out safe too. Oh, Crucible. <laughs> That would have actually been pretty decent a few turns ago. Well, no, because they were keeping blockers back, so... Yeah, we'll just swing face. They still have the two mana open for the food again, so... They are gaining enough here, regardless. Good game opponent. That was a terrific draw. Something to note, too. It's not like we ended up flooding out this game. But if we do end up seeing too much mana, then we might want to consider like a second crucible since that generates creatures for us too. So we'd have like uh, 23 land and then that second crucible as the 24th. I could see that. One big thing that I want to get in the recording is actually have Hinata on the board though. Like that, that feels like it's essential since that was the build around, you know what I mean? Okay, Hinata in hand. Oh, no white source. Oh, e. Oh, treasure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but is this keepable though? <laughs> no, not really. Um, crap. The opponent goes first too. Dude, let's, let's give it a shot. At least Ancestor's Aid, we can target the opponent's creatures and ramp that way. This is not as bad as the first hand though. That, that first hand. Oh, there we go. Wow. Not getting punished with the mana. That's been pretty lucky. Oh, Rakdos. Vran. Okay. A Rakdos probably isn't as fast as Mono Red, so that's good news. The problem is it has a ton of great removal. So no turn two, probably. We're just going to go... Restless Anchorage was not a bad draw. Because we, I don't want to ramp off the Ancestor's Aid right now when we're not, like... I don't I don't think it's necessary is what I'm getting at. Urbrask's Forge. Okay, swing for four. And we lose another two from the Vran. They're going back up to 21. It's dangerous. That's really dangerous. Monastery Mentor number two is pretty good. And then Hanada next turn. Hopefully Hanada doesn't get instant removed because that that's the big thing we want this on the board because uh, we have uh, daring discovery too we torch the tower exiles as well not like it matters for this current one but forge they gotta swing for five we're losing two. Oh no guys we're in so much trouble um okay how do we how do we survive the turn <laughs> This is only our turn four. I was going to say, okay, how can we do stuff faster? But this is only turn four, man. Um, so we could, we have the fourth mana. We do have Swift Spear and Atali's Favor, which becomes a decent blocker if they don't just immediately remove it. Because Atali's Favor can discover. Okay, so it's, so it's not Hanada for the turn, unfortunately because we have nothing else in hand. If I would have used Ancestor's Aid earlier for the ramp, no, yeah, it still wouldn't have worked out. So it's Swift Spear. And Atali's Favor. And we have to keep it as a blocker, unfortunately. But let's see what we hit off that Discover 3. Discover 3, Charter Course. Okay, it's not bad at all, honestly. Restock the hand. What do we discard? Ooh. Probably. I don't know, actually. Because if we can actually survive the turn, the family reunion is going to be sick. I don't think we end up surviving the turn, though. I think we're going to actually just ditch the recruiter there, then. And then we go no attacks. We're going to be forced to block... Forge is a 3-1 with Trample, so we have to block that. Then 3 gets through over here. Godric as well, dude. <laughs> Holy cow. This is what I get for saying I don't think Rakdos is as fast. That looks sick, man. This Rakdos aggro deck? I mean, that was their that was their turn 5, but that's pretty... That's, that's a pretty normal turn to win on for Mono Red, so yeah. 
I'd, I'd call that equally as fast, and Vran really piled that extra damage through. A uh, four extra damage from the Vran's ability. Dang, GG opponent. Oh, man. I wonder if we went first there, if we could have pulled something off, right? Like, maybe we would have been able to get that Hanada down and had it survive a little longer, too. Okay. Okay. Brutal game so far. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased that I kept that hand because we ended up drawing just really well. Um, and that showcases... Uh, certain limitations with the deck, like can it actually draw well after the fact? And uh, so far, it actually has been drawing like not terribly at all. Here we go. We go first. We got our creatures. We got some other stuff. Um, no Hanada though. All right, keep seven. Yeah, dude, nice. Oh, we don't have a turn one though because the storm part coast. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Still want to get it down for the uh, turn two Swift Spear then. And we definitely want to play this as land, even though nothing's happening with it. We need that uh, Jeskai Triome. How about it, guys? Glass Casket. Oh, man. Orphine's Tower chilling over there. Oh, land. Mentor. Let's go. Actually getting some uh, creatures on the board. Feels good. Third mana from the opponent. Candy Trail. It's not removal. They get Scry 2, and they, they get to keep the Candy Trail's bottom ability open with whatever counter spell or whatever else they want to also keep open. So, probably... Ooh, Atali's favor. Dude, holy cow. What do I even start with? Playing around to make disappear would mean Swift Spear first, then Swing, and then Ancestor's Aid. We get a treasure, which isn't bad. Atali's favor is like really good here too, but I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll get countered. It could easily just be some spot removal for the mentor when it comes time. All right, let's see if it's going to be the counter spell. We target the Swiss spear because the mentor has a huge target on his back anyways. Get an extra 1-1 one, one and hope that a board wipe doesn't come down next turn. Uh, oh, do I put this on top? Probably. I don't mind drawing that again. Got to have the fourth mana. I don't mind drawing Swiss Spear again. Yeah. It's not that bad. Down to 15. We have to be prepared for the opponent to gain some life here, too. Last casket, pick up that Swiss Spear. <laughs> Still have two mana open. Could be another um, Lagoon Breach. I wonder if we attempt that Atali's Favor now, though. No, probably not, right? We go for Swing for one. So if I would have put Mentor on the bottom, there would have been a chance to see a land. But Daring Discovery isn't doing like too much right now either, so... Disruption protocol for the mentor. That's brutal stuff, man. So we put the mentor back on top for it to get uh, countered. They only have two cards. If they're fizzling, then it's time for Candy Trail, which gets them a draw. So we, I really like Crucible as creatures, but having the fifth here to play around a Make Disappear seems pretty essential, right? Hoping that it's not just going to be some simple removal from the opponent. One, two, three, four, five. They don't have the flash on the horn locked whale. Do they? Oh, stroke of midnight. No. <laughs> so the favor fizzles out. We don't get the discover, but we do have five total mana for daring discovery now, which does discover four. Maybe we'll hit Hanato with it, right? They go treasure map, yep. Uh, recruiter, pretty good, dude. We can't keep expecting the opponent just to fizzle out, though. This one card could easily still be some removal or a counter spell. So, what do we risk? We go creatures on the recruiter. Dude, let's just go. Let's go for that discover, huh? Uh, I guess submit zero discover four. <laughs> come on, come on. My hope is whatever's holding it here is just the treasure map scry.
a counter spell would be so brutal because that means like every counter hit its mark. Oh, so spear. <laughs> well, it's on the it's on the lowest end of what we can discover, but it's not bad to hit a creature here at all. Memory deluge. Restock their hand. Grab whatever they need. Yep, yep. Well, that was pretty fast. I don't, I don't like how fast they chose those guys. I have a bad feeling for our creatures right now. <laughs> Um, if we don't see a fifth mana, if we see a fifth mana, it's probably discovery again, because discover four is pretty wild. Three cards in hand for the opponent. Maybe it is the recruiter this time, though. Uh, recruiter creatures over the three mana side for now, probably. We get the prowess on that. Sorcery speed, too, so we can't do anything fancy with it. And this is sorcery speed, too, so. Okay. Couple creatures, go for treasure map, have five open. Uh, definitely a wandering emperor style deck for sure, but I don't think we play around a ghost. If they have it, they have it. We just, yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, we just have to keep swinging. No, depopulate. The board was getting stacked for that recruiter play. Mentor, dude, we're drawing really well, huh? We have two open to play around to make disappear, which the opponent hasn't showed that they had yet. Could be like a disruption protocol again, I suppose, since that seems to be the style of deck they're going for with the candy trail and the glass casket. It is an iced out and they go for the bargain to make it cost the one less. Oh, and then the horn locked whale comes down. Okay. Well, we're in danger. <laughs> Let's go for that discover, huh? And then submit zero. What do we hit? <gasps> Hanada, bro. Holy cow. We got the Hanada on the discover four. <laughs> How cool is that, man? Okay, now all we have to do. Okay, uh, no blocks. That's concerning. That's concerned. I guess they can't block in the air anyways, but I was thinking like, no, Hanada, come back. Come back, Hanada. Hey, we have a creature. We could go at Tali's favor. Get that discover on there instead of the mentor. Oh, man, brutal stuff. All right, let's go. Let's go mentor. Well, let's go swing first, right? Or should I have kept a chump blocker back? Maybe. Probably not. I'm, I'm pretty sure we still have a couple turns before that whale puts us in danger, but... Mentor comes down. Mentor before the discover cards is much better if we can actually keep it on the board, right? Swing for six, no blocks. Down to seven. One has seven open over there. Restless Anchorage. Honestly, this sixth mana would have been pretty good this whole time. Being able to do multiple... um multiple three mana things every turn. So Atali's favor on to Mentor. Mentor has a huge target anyways. As cool as Trample is on Prowess, it wouldn't do too much for us in this game anyways. So yeah, we're just, we're gonna slam that onto the token. Hope for the best here. Discover, discover three. Mentor, not bad. Not I, We have to be concerned about another board wipe though. This is still really sick a good swing for five as well upon us down to six guys there's a there's a chance like we've come back from worse on the channel and like just like mind-blowing comebacks are oh, the memory deluge for seven though grab whatever they need now that's probably the nail in the coffin right because just board wipe go for the swing we're chumping this time because of that threat of a board wipe yep 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 because we're probably gonna lose all the creatures anyways yeah <laughs> rough business man and they still have oh wait we did play our restless last turn didn't we so that could fly in for two flying for three with the uh recruiter wonder if this is going to get removed. When it attacks, you create like the 
So unfortunately, they have two mana to power up the incubator, right? They transform this. It's a 4-4. It blocks Recruiter uh, easily. But three in the air, is it worth it? No, probably not. Probably not, right? Do I still play this as a creature, though? Yes. Yeah, we, we still play this. We want something on the board in case we... Yeah, 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 yeah. We still play this, but we don't swing with the Recruiter. Get a map token. I'll tell you what, man. No! Actually, do I put this on top? <laughs> It's a funny game, dude, because like I we like I kind of feel like we're still in this a little bit, but do I put this on top is the question. Okay. I think we I think we put it on top just because it's a flyer and it's not like we're dead yet, so we're getting there though, aren't we? No blocks down to three. They have the flash on the horn locked whale. Oh man. Oh, man. There's a lot of cool things that happened in this. Oh, they go horn locked on their turn so it doesn't come out tapped. Okay, well, that's probably the GG's, right? We do have the map. We have a chance of putting, like, a counter on the... It's not like we're doing anything else with the mana. So, let's do this. Let's see what we see. Family reunion. So we're going to be forced to block there. Oh, no. It's it's game, actually. It's game. Oh, darn. Yeah, just a full swing from the opponent. Since we're at three now. GG opponent. I really felt like there was a chance. Good game. That was, that was, that was excellent. Control did exactly what you'd expect Control to do, and it looked rough. Man, dude, the treasure map in control is going to be terrific, too. They went for, like, that whole artifact side of things here as well with, like, the disruption protocol. That was really neat. Counterspells hit exactly where they needed those counterspells to hit, and the spot removal was the most brutal, though, I would say, right? Yeah. 37 minutes in, guys. Let's go one more. I believe in the build, man. I believe we can get there. It's definitely janky, though. Holy cow. Yeah, we're getting picked apart in a lot of these. Um, keeping some questionable hands, but the draws have been terrific, right? Like, the starting hands have been like, oh, well, we should probably mulligan, but I'm not going to. But then the draws after the fact were just like, oh, man, this is terrific. Or it's it's coming down to like, oh, yeah, this is awesome, as long as the opponent just doesn't, and then the opponent does it, you know? So... <laughs> that comes down to just Magic the Gathering, though. Oh, no, opponent goes first. Hanada's in hand. And the dis Daring Discovery. Dude, we gotta try it. We gotta try it. Come on. <laughs> Ruin, Lurker, Bat. Okay, lots of new stuff from the opponents today. Okay, no punish from the Storm Carved Coast. Voice of the Blast. Oh, crap, dude. Oh, crap. I saw the Ruin Lurker bat, and I was like, oh, we might actually be able to get to our turn four. <laughs> um, uh-oh. <laughs> right? Uh, Voice of the Blessed gets out of hand really fast, so we're, we're, we probably are going to be sweating by turn five. So will Hanada actually get to do a thing? That's the question. Swing. They're going to keep voice back? Oh, okay. I was going to say. Oh. They are going to keep voice back. Oh, Seat of the Empire. But we only have two mana. And they don't know we have Seat, obviously. I wonder what other card does the thing like when the creature attacks uh, outside of Seat of the Empire. Rune Lurker Bat. Yikes, guys. Yikes. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. What have I done? <laughs> okay. Um, Ancestor's Aid ramps us. <laughs> Look, we're only at 18. They, so, like, we probably get to next turn. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's just see what happens. Worst comes to worst, we could get a little bit of ramp on the Ancestor's Aid. Uh, Burning Sun's Fury will be one mana once Hanada hits the board if we want to give it haste. 
Um, I'd much rather... Let's, if they swim with voice, then it's going to be seat, but they held voice back last turn, so yeah, they're going to hold voice back again this turn. Either way, we wanted seat for our fourth land. Voice is now in the air, and it is definitely around the Hanada. Okay, turn four, guys. Turn four, Hanada comes down. <laughs> Ow, my face. We're only at 15, so, like, that's not bad. We do... We can tap Hanada <laughs> for the Burning Suns Fury, which is pretty funny. Oh, uh, look, guys. Did you see how cool that is? Oh, man. Oh, opponent. Just just do your swings. Let me keep Hanada on this board. This will be so cool. What is that? That's not... That's not a removal spell. <gasps> guys, are we going to get to do the cool thing? So we're going to take that. We should probably block one of the... Only we could give first strike to that voice, huh? Like Hanada, give first strike off the Ancestor's Aid, block the voice. D, that would be so good. Also, the Ruin Lurker bat... Maybe that was the call because of the like all the life gain and stuff. Down to five. They're at thirty-five. So I guess I guess now's <laughs> now's the chance. Do we win next turn? Probably not, since this has vigilance too, right? Scry one. Like there there could be a potentially in like just an insane. Oh, daring discovery takes the blocker out of the equation. I keep forgetting that. I keep forgetting that, guys. Uh, okay, my turn. More land. It's tap land. We're going to need as much land on the board as possible, so it's going to be seat. We start with the discover four, right? Probably. Or is it like ancestor's aid? No, not yet. We'll, we'll make sure we have the mana for the ancestor's aid when it comes time. One, two, three. <laughs> so it only costs two. Itali's favor. I don't think we could do 35 damage, but still, this is this is the turn to pop off if there has ever been a turn. Monastery Swiss Spear. Not bad, not bad. So we want to make sure we have mana with the Ancestor's Aid, but we want to start with the Discover again on the Atali's Favor, right? Discover. Because we're... Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Watch the Auto Tapper. That would have been bad. That, that would have fizzled us out right then and there. Another Swiss Spear. Okay. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, we'll still have mana for Ancestor's Aid on the Swiss Spear. This is so cool, though, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so cool. Whoa, bro. Yeah, watch the uh, auto tapper in this build. Holy cow. <laughs> so if the Swiss Spears didn't have haste, the Burning Sun's Fury would have been insane. Pay for the, pay with the one treasure. Oh man, oh man, that was awesome. Down to sixteen though. <laughs> they they gained so much. Wait, how much damage was that then? Was that nineteen damage? Voice of the Blast. Let's let's drop them the Chi Chi's. Yeah, so uh, the big thing I'm noticing is just really, really slow startups. So um, a little bit of extra removal could go a long way. As cool as the Burning Sun's Fury was and like how um, like we, we saw it tack on an extra six damage in that in that battle, right? Which is a ton of extra damage for what is a one mana spell at that time. Heck yeah, I had fun, dude. Hold up. Um... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, let, let's go. Let's go talk about it in the final thoughts. Right, we're forty-four minutes in. I don't think we won a single one today. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. We still had fun playing some jank. Still, like, um, hold up. Here's the deck list again, guys. Really neat concept with the daring discovery and the Hanada. 
but it was just way too janky. The setup took way too long. And with the Atali's favor too, it was just like, it's really cool, man. I like it. What would you guys add or take out to make it less janky? Like, what could we do? There's There could potentially be something. A few things like right off the bat that we have to note is there's probably not enough creatures. Uh, let's double check here. 15 creatures. Uh, 16 to 17 creatures is probably going to be a better bet, right? Um, and for this one, with all the different things that we have to target, probably 17. What are we dropping to get those uh, creatures up? And what creatures are we going up? Probably some two drop creatures, right? The uh, honorable mentions, we had the spell spear, I believe it's called. Already has the trample, so we don't have to give it trample with like uh, Tali's favor, but it doesn't have haste. So like giving it haste on the Burning Sun's Fury could be cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right what what are we dropping for everything guys probably dropping one daring discovery down to three is fine this is still going to be a key part of i mean it like it's a janky pick but it's also a key it, it's one of the keystones of the build right it's part of the heart of it all uh same concept with hanada it is legendary and we didn't get to see it too much today but I guess we could drop down to three of these as well. We're, we're, we got to like increase the overall consistency of the build, right? To make it just a little bit less janky because like jank is fun and all, but when you're just uh, running face first into uh, incredibly difficult decks, then, you know, it, it like you'd prefer it to be more consistent. So Hanada could be dropped down to three. Daring Discovery could be dropped down to three. Burning Sun's Fury could be dropped down to one easily. That gives us three spots. I would go up one or two creatures, and that would probably be the Spell Spears. Actually, here's what we'll do, guys. Here's what we'll... I love how I typed Spell up here, thinking that that would narrow down the search. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. That's really funny. Okay, let's go ahead... What we'll do for down in the description is we'll have a modified for consistency list here and then we'll have the list that I played in the video and then the modified for consistency list. So we'll go ahead and modify this right now. That gives us uh, three open spots and I would go up the I really don't know what the card is called ever. So I'm going to type in prowess instead. Probably. Yeah, here it is. Kenra spell spear, right? Probably. Is this what we want as the creature? Uh, the Forge Chanter is definitely a great budget option for a, a prowess card that we could add in here. It, it has to be a creature though, right? Or something that generates creatures like Jaya could be really cool. Ooh. Ooh, because like if you go Daring Discovery, Discover 4, hit a Jaya, that could be wild, man. Well, yeah, because Jaya's a non-creature card too. Okay, hold up. I'm gonna I'm I'm thinking that Jaya, huh? <laughs> but yeah, some uh, some uh, budget options would be like the Forge Chanter, but I think we're gonna go Spell Spear, which is also just an uncommon, but uh, commons are much more budget overall. Probably Spell Spear, I would say, as a two up. There we go. Is that enough to increase the consistency? Probably not. I mean, like it's still gonna be drank regardless. I would say based on what we were seeing there. A uh, little bit of, I don't want to call it like anti-synergy, but it's, it like doesn't do anything. It's like the family reunion with the Hinata. Like Hinata doesn't make the family reunion cost one less because it doesn't target anything. It's just like creatures you control in general, but it does pair really well with the monastery mentor when it comes time for the prowess. We're going to have to revisit this with a bunch of protection spells now, aren't we guys? At some point. <laughs> yeah, I think this is probably where I would land and we got to like double check the mana base here. Uh, majority red, white, blue. Okay. Yep. The trade outs didn't affect anything. I would keep the mana base the same. Actually, noteworthy things was like restless uh, anchorage could have really come in clutch against that control deck, especially so actually really like all the creature lands i think actually that that's a case to be made for just the 15 creatures too we do have the creature lands and the crucible and that's another thing as well do we want the second crucible i'm gonna say no because the 24 land felt right and so if you go up the second crucible there are going to be those games every now and then where you actually just get both crucibles you really want to play one you really want to play a fifth mana but you can't because you'll lose a, a crucible to the legendary rule, which of course you could tap the other one first, then play the crucible. But yeah, I guess that would work actually, but I'm going to keep it at one crucible for now. 
All right, guys, let me know what you thought of the list. I hope you still had fun today, uh, regardless of how much we got beat up from the opponents. <laughs> if you made it this far into the video, though, for real, y'all are champions. I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video.